Hello and good afternoon. Today I'd like to share something that I've been pondering on, thinking about, sitting with. And it's nothing new that I haven't mentioned before, but I wanted to share with you what a beautiful thing Surrender is. Surrender in its purest, truest sense. The selfless act that is the beginning, the middle, and the ending of our spiritual cycles. When you take a look at the universe, the bioverse, the multiverse, oh, one thing is undeniable all the way down to the microcosmic level is cycles. So this selfless acting of surrender, let's kind of take a look at surrender because surrender usually entails giving up. I surrender. And in some cases, in some ways, this may be true. But instead of surrendering to an irresistible force that you recognize you can't resist, overpowering numbers, a stronger argument, it's more like being backed into or painted into a corner. When there's no alternative, surrender seems the only <laughs> remaining choice. But let's look at it in the spiritual sense. Because indeed, as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> there's nothing else. There's no other way to look at it except in spiritual context. Otherwise, it's just part of the Action, reaction, maya, illusory. Nature of what we have always thought to be so. So as you surrender to the obvious <laughs> that on a individual level there's so little that we know. So this first step of surrendering is to surrender in the face of over Overwhelmingly macro amount of information, of knowledge, of wisdom that we don't know. So this is an act of surrendering. Surrender to the fact that you as an individual 
are not the be all and end all of understanding. In fact, you should be humbled by what is so. Ninety nine. Point ninety nine, ninety nine. The nines can stretch to infinity. This is the unknowable. So you're talking about best case scenario, this decimal point with a lot of zeros and finally a one is the extent of what you can know. And this represents years and years of study and work and reflection, inspiration. And humbled, but able to be okay. As I say frequently, you surrender to the unknowable with the caveat that life experience accumulated information slash knowledge will lead you to a wisdom where that a fraction of the unknowable can become known. But this is not without its struggle or effort to get to this point. So it's surrendering to the insignificance of ourselves as we have grown to know, protect, and in some cases, love a little bit too much. This is the egoic self. As Adyashanti says, the psychological self that's really a hindrance. We <laughs> hope <laughs> falsely, as it turns out, that it will define who and what we are. It will set up our parameters between the barriers between us, between me and them. Whereas there are no barriers, there is no separation. Division is madness. Madness in that in the face of overwhelming demonstration of the oneness of existence. It's madness to seek to separate, to divide oneself from the self, the self that we all share, the inherent birthright and condition of each and every one of us. So this surrender is a process of fertilizing, encouraging to grow, humility, to be humble in the face of what's so.
So this surrender. And then you come, and eventually it will come to us all when we start that first step I've mentioned. That first step into the unknown. The first step in acquiring what it takes to banish fear, to understand the unknown as welcoming, no matter what you may incur on this path, this journey to wellness, wholeness, and ultimately truth. So you get to a point where surrender takes on a new meaning. Initially, it's surrendering to your insignificance as you understand yourself. Then it's a surrender to forgetting, forgiving, for not living in fear any longer. Another act of surrender. You surrender these fears. Now, in the process of these steps, you're going to surrender to a teacher, quite possibly. And I must state here that it's better said to surrender to the Dharma, to the teachings, rather than an individual. The individual is just a mouthpiece to verbalize, to express the Dharma, both through words, but more importantly, through deeds, through examples. So, so there's a surrender. And if you've got a dependency on your teacher, your guru, your master, your sifu, your roshi, you might surrender to him or her. If you find comfort within this act, if you Don't question. If you're doing this through love, by all means, surrender. Because this should be the litmus test of any considered surrender. Is that, does it pass? Does it take you over the threshold into love? Love emanating from the heart? Does it help you to recognize that it's in the heart and to much lesser extent in the mind that you will find the truth of the dharmas or the truth of the being that you've chosen to accept guidance from? And if you're healthy, if you have a pulse, <laughs> you'll be filled with questions. Questions are the impetus. Questions lead to quest. 
through questioning, you start to express, to understand that you're on a quest. And questions are very, very helpful at this point. Necessary. But there will come a time when you surrender the need to question. And this need to not question is predicated on number one, trust. That you don't need to know the answer. Trust that there are answers. Accept answers to your questions as you find them. But remember, just letting go is the most constructive, meaningful effort that you can make in your spiritual growth. So you don't surrender to questions. You simply surrender questioning. I've called myself more than once the man with no questions. And if you know anything about me as a younger man, I was nothing but questions. So to get to a place of surrendering my questioning, surrendering to not seeking answers to questions, you can appreciate the immensity of what it meant to me to reach such a state. And I always come back to my dear colleague at the university that I taught here in Taiwan, whose English was very limited. And as I got to know her better, I was full of all the questions about why this, why that, how does this work, about the new culture that I found myself in. And I never forget her saying to me out of frustration, almost yelling, no questions, okay. <laughs> And she was right. Ultimately, it's a sign, it's a benchmark, hallmark of progress when the questioning dies, because that's what it does. Buried it, put it to rest, dismiss it. Recognize it while recognizing that it had a useful, it had a purpose, but like all purposes, they have endings as well. And it's being able to recognize endings, which is probably more difficult. The acceptance of endings is probably more difficult than recognizing beginnings, and that's the nature of things. We hold on to things that we think misguidedly, mostly, that we have come to know, and put them to rest in a state of thankfulness and appreciation for their assistance 
on your journey, your step-by-step -step journey. So now we're learning to practice. Practice surrender at a deeper, deeper, more meaningful level. And one thing I do know is that surrender is a daily. Moment by moment, actually process that we need to be continually engaged in and focused on until it becomes second nature. But just because it becomes second nature does not relegate it to any position of lesser importance. If I had to put a label on things, letting it go, just letting it go, sincerely, let it go, is probably or certainly my strongest suggestion. Let it go. And this is closely followed by becoming a state of constant surrender. Because as you make steps, as you progress, or seemingly progress, as we all know, the joke is that you can't measure progress if you've already accomplished, if it already are just being. But human minds, we need to measure. And that's the usefulness of thinking of steps. It's a measurement. We need to think in terms of progress so that we can reassure ourselves that we're on the right track. Some way to measure progress. And then eventually you'll surrender this concept when you begin to understand that no measurement, especially, particularly of progress, is, has any relevance to the eternal, that which is, was, and always will be. Surrender and surrender yet again. And in the process, you start to deconstruct this carefully constructed egoic self. Some may feel that this is their sense of self and this is indeed their accomplishment through life to more deeply understand themselves. But that's such a superficial understanding and it pales in the face of the ultimate rumblings, the ultimate beginnings of true understanding. So you've gone through this step of surrendering. You're practicing, consciously practicing the act of continual forgiveness until it becomes an unconscious action in that you habitually do it 
just as you breathe in, breathe out, live heartbeat to heartbeat. But the truth is, through the unconscious, we find our way to the conscious in its most elevated state, so far beyond our understanding of what we considered consciousness, which is just another word for our egoic self. So you're deconstructing through this process. You're deconstructing everything that you thought was you and the world that you thought you lived in. This is the Maya, the illusion of thinking that the world we've created, the world we see, is somehow the real world. And that's pretty laughable when you think about it seriously, that you can take a meek, take a leap of faith, as you will, from the idea that you're seeing things as they really are. And to believe that you are seeing anything other than a delusionary almost pathetic when you look at it. The needs of the ego are pathetic. It wants to survive and it will do anything to survive. So as you see, as you feel, as you understand on the deepest level, the falsity of what you previously believed as almost gospel, as if your words were God's words. There comes a time now you've deconstructed, now you've seen the falsity, you've seen the illusory nature. You understand what is Maya, or at least you're beginning to. You know that what you thought to be so is not really so. And it's funny what you speculated, what others have speculated about a unity, about a unified self the existence, the universality of us, each and every one of us, you've dismissed that as an illusion. So you need to turn it on its head. And this just can be very discouraging. The word eludes me. But needless to say, an event of this momentity of finally grasping that everything you thought was so is <laughs> not so. And everything that you thought couldn't be so is so, so when you see this false construct, this egoic, this psychological self, when it's ex exposed as the charlatan, it really is, then you surrender your ego. So now surrender is taking on a slightly different. Before you used to surrender to, now you begin surrendering up. And actually, this is when you start to get in the realms of 
true surrender. You surrender up your false sense of self. And in so doing, the beginnings of the true appreciation, what I saying about surrender, it's a continual state of being, just as breathing in and breathing out. It's part of the cycle. It's part of the rhythm of the universe. And everything in the universe practices this continual act of surrendering. So now you've surrendered up your ego. You've recognized the falsity, the maya of this personality, this construct. This person that you created with a reality that you created. You surrendered up this. And you're ready to really begin the understanding of surrender. And something that happens after awakening, the me that's banished, this egoic self that you've surrendered psychological self this me after the after you enter the state of awakening you enjoy a respite from the me but the me's still there Maybe its voice is smaller and weaker, but the me can adapt. The me can be the me of a special enlightened being. Careful of this is the biggest trap when you think you're special or different because you went through this very normal process of awakening, birthright of one and all, but somehow the me assumes the spiritual mantle. Beware. This is a difficult one to overcome. And if you look closely, you're no longer practicing surrender. You need to, to surrender the spiritual ego.